Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this little tour of my refurbished relic room. And maybe if you watched the uh, outfitting of the display cases, maybe you got an idea to display something in a unique way. For me, that's part of it. I just love showing people what I found. And when I have guests, I love to bring them into the relic room. And But boy, if they get me going, I'll talk all afternoon. Anyway, I thought this would be a neat time to feature one of the relics that actually you saw me putting in a case today. When we think about the armament of the Civil War, we think first maybe about cannons and artillery and shells and cannonballs. And after that, we think about muskets and we think about bayonets and we think about pistols and all of those weapons of war. But one of the things that we might overlook is that a lot of soldiers uh, had a plan B and a plan C and a plan D because they knew their life might depend upon having one more weapon than their opponent. They carried a rifled musket. They had a bayonet on the end of the rifled musket. If they were in hand-to-hand -hand con combat, Maybe they had a pistol in their boot. Some of them went even further. Today you saw me hang this knife in uh, the new wall case that I refurbished and hung. It's not unusual to find camp knives and camp spoons and camp forks uh, in a Civil War camp. But if you've ever found a fighting knife or a Bowie knife or a dagger or a D-guard Bowie knife, something like that on a battlefield, you'll never mistake the two. Because camp knives are not that much different from knives we have today in that they're usually very thin and very flimsy, and they're made to cut meat or spread butter or whatever. This is most definitely a side knife. Uh, it was found on the Civil War battlefield, on a, on a very fierce Civil War battlefield, as a matter of fact, which makes my mind race as to how this knife got dropped and what it was doing there. But this knife is much thicker. I know you can't really see it in the, in the video, but this knife is much thicker uh, than a kitchen knife. It also is a pretty good size. It has uh, clearly defined rivet holes for a strong handle on the knife. And as you can see, it's shaped in such a way that it's a perfect Bowie knife. This might have been on a soldier's belt in a scabbard. It might have been tucked into his boot or tucked into his waist somehow, maybe in a sheath. But those guys carried secondary weapons because remember, most of them were carrying muskets that only fired one shot at a time, and it would take 20 or 30 seconds to reload under the most ideal circumstances. If a guy's charging at you and you don't have a bullet in your gun, you're gonna want something else to defend yourself. This Bowie knife is one of those tools. The most unusual uh, plan B that I know of, the, of my dad finding, uh, was found in a Civil War trench in Cold Harbor, and it's these. They call them brass knuckles. These happen to be iron. But they were worn over the knuckles, fit in your hand with your fingers through it, had a brace point here where it would brace against the meat of your hand when you were fighting, would be better than just rings. And I'm telling you, if, if you ever got off a good shot with these brass knuckles, you would break a jaw. You could probably break a man's neck if you hit him hard enough with these brass knuckles, or in this case, iron knuckles. But I'm thinking about these, and I'm thinking about who dropped them in a Civil War trench. Was he in hand-to-hand -hand contact and they got knocked out of his hand? Was he killed? Same thing with the knife, I don't know the brutality of that war. A lot of people don't realize that during the Civil War was a time when uh, new weapon technology was, uh, was, was, was prevalent. A lot of things were used in the Civil War that were, had never been used before. I think about submersibles, submarines, ironclad ships. Did you know that a guy came out with a steam-powered gun that was used in the Civil War. It was an enormous contraption. It was as big as a locomotive. It was supposed to shoot cannonballs and shells without gunpowder, just using water and fire and steam. It did not work very well, and it was abandoned as soon as the Civil War was over. But these two items, 
These two plan B's, if you will, um, illustrate the brutality of the Civil War because when those new technologies failed, sometimes it was down to just who had the better knife or who had a little advantage in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Sobering thought. I'm glad you went with me today. I enjoyed having you along. I hope you saw something that you'll remember, something that you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel if you like. And until then, I'm the Battlefield Walker. Be good and say your prayers.